everyone, my name is Annette and you may know me as Natter's Plans and today I'm going to go over my acquisitions and impressions for the month of October. Now I acquired a total of 5 games and I managed to play 4 out of the 5 games. So I'm going to go over my first game that I did not get to play and give you my first thought of it regarding the components or anything else. And then I'll go over the other games more in depth and tell you more or less what I like about the gameplay of those games. So let's get to it. So the first game I'll go over is called Cytosis, a cell biology game. And I backed this game about a year ago, and the reason I backed it is because my partner is a biologist. And I thought this is the perfect game for him because he gets to see uh, the world that he works in applied into a board game, and also because that way I can kind of more or less know or learn from the game, and also hopefully he'll throw in a few more other things too about the cell biology. So this is more or less like an educational game. So the cool thing about Cytosis uh, from just initially opening the game up is the artwork. So the artwork on the cover of the box is just like the artwork inside the box. It's great, it's clear, it's, it's science, but it's also colorful. So you don't necessarily see the mix of the two together, but it's really great because it's enticing. So I really like the color work and combinations in this game. Also, the component quality is great. It's really thick and chunky. I like the colors for the uh, different players. The first player marker is also ridiculously big and I love it because <laughs> it's a huge cell. And the card quality is great too. So component quality and the artwork is just super. Um, I don't know too much about this game, how it flows. From what I see, it's a worker placement game. So you're applying your pieces at certain points on the board and they do certain things, actions. But um, I'm looking forward to trying it out and see what I can learn from this game too. So the first game I'll go over is called Can't Stop Express. Now Can't Stop Express is based on a game called Can't Stop, which I really enjoy. It's a game that has a lot of player interaction, a lot of press your luck, and it's easy to teach and get players involved. So I thought the same thing would happen with Can't Stop Express. I saw that on Kickstarter and I backed it for like 10 bucks or something. So it was fairly cheap and I didn't think twice. So I picked up Can't Stop Express. So when I got it, I looked at the box and I thought, oh, it looks beautiful. Like it's exactly like the original Can't Stop. And, the, and then once I opened the box, I noticed that the score sheets weren't very like colorful at all. I mean, it was pretty much like an Excel spreadsheet. And also the dice, they were just plain regular dice, red and just normal, nothing outstanding about the dice quality. So I thought, well, maybe the game itself is great <laughs> because it is modeled after another great game. But when I played it, I didn't feel that same player interaction between the group. So I felt like everyone was pretty much working on their own spreadsheet and they weren't interacting or pushing each other to keep on rolling or anything like that. It was, it was unfortunately a little bit disappointing because that's what I was looking for in this game. Um, as far as it being a roll and write game that's fairly quick and easy to play, um, yeah, it is. However, there's a lot of math involved. So once you finish the game, you're going to have to add up so many points. And in the end, it was just a little too mathy for what it was. And I think I'd rather play a different roll and write game than this. So unfortunately, I wasn't a big fan of Can't Stop Express. So another game that I also acquired this past month is called Thief's Market. Now, I acquired it because Tasty Minstrel Games, they sent this game to me. I was a little wary about this game because, first off, it's a three to five player game and it's dice chucking and I don't necessarily play these big group games and I usually try to have at least two players in a game. So I got it anyways and I managed to play it and actually I really enjoyed it. Um, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it because of the player interaction. I, I really thought this game was good in the sense that it had everyone engaged. 
Now, <laughs> it was something that I was looking for in the previous game that I had talked about, the Cat Stop Express. I actually found it in Thief's Market. So in this game, what you're trying to do is you roll these dice and there are a whole bunch of different goods like gold and gems and rubies and whatever. So you're trying to get these things because you're going to apply them to these cards. There's a card market and if you acquire certain gems, you can purchase certain cards which resemble different characters. And um, these different characters will give you special abilities or they will score you bigger points in the end of game. So you're trying to collect these cards, but you're also trying to figure out how to steal the dice or the gems from other people too, so that they don't get those certain particular cards. Now that's where the game is really fun and interesting because when the dice are rolled, you have the option of picking however many of those dice that you want for your own self. And then the next person has two options. They can either pick as many dice that are left in the center or they can steal from you. Now, if they steal from you, they're gonna take all those dice except for one. They could put one back into the pile. And then the game continues on where people can either steal or they can take from the center. Eventually, when all players have their own dice and don't wanna steal anymore, then that's when the game goes into the next phase and that's when players pick up their cards and such. So it's really interactive because you're kind of picking and choosing what you want, but you don't want to necessarily become a target. So you don't really want to get all the great dice because you will become that target. And that's what I really liked about Thieves Market. It's something that was very interactive. I like to take that kind of system in the game and I really enjoyed it. I had a lot more fun than I actually expected. So that's a big thumbs up for me. So another game I'll talk to you about is called Card City XL. Now this was another Kickstarter that I backed a while ago and I finally got it. And the reason I picked this up is because it's from another designer that I enjoyed and he designed the game of Town Center. Now Town Center has a really interesting drafting system and development of the city that I haven't seen before and it's so puzzly and I thought I want that kind of game, but in card form. And that's pretty much what this is. So the cool thing with Card City XL, besides it being a card form of Town Center, is the fact that it also has 240 different combinations or ways of playing this game. Because there's different levels, you can play it easy, medium, or hard. You can also play it in 16 other different variations, and there's also scoring. Uh, different ways to score the game and it just ends up being an overload of game in this box. So the cool thing uh, also about this game is the drafting system. So the drafting between players uh, is really interesting. I haven't played it with more than myself because I only played it as a solo game. <laughs> but uh, what I'm interested in trying it out is a two-player game is the fact that when you're drafting the game, you're drafting certain cards, a number of cards, and then you're going to place them into two piles. One pile is going to have one card face up with two cards face down, and the other pile is going to have two cards face up and one card face down. And then the other player gets to pick and choose which one of the two piles they want. So I thought that was really interesting because it, it offers a sense of total information but also hidden information and the other player is in charge of what is hidden and so i thought that was really cool and also the development process and building your city and town i thought that was well it's just like the other game town center and the way it develops but the drafting system is what really intrigued me so i only play this as a solo game and i could say it's a solid solo play um, I did manage to play it wrong the first time and the designer corrected me so since then I managed to play it correctly <laughs> and it's still great. So I've really been enjoying Card City XL as a solo game and I'm more interested in trying it out with more players. So the last game I'll go over is called Clans of Caledonia. Now this game was my favorite game that I played last month. And the reasoning behind it is because I love the flow of the game. First off, the quality of the game is great. Um, I love the player pieces. All the tokens are so different of the resources. There's like little cheese and little cows and such. And they're so cute and tiny. 
Um, so the resources are great, the tiles are great, the game board itself, it's double sided and there's different uh, amounts of them, so there's a different form of variability in the game, you can play it differently every time. Just the quality, the artwork, everything is just great in that aspect. But the gameplay is what I really like. Now, the gameplay itself, it a lot of people have said that it's kind of like Terra Mystica and I really don't like that because I don't I didn't see it as Terra Mystica. I thought it was a lot different than that. Um, I thought it was its own thing. Uh, one reason behind that is because of the market system and how players can kind of manage the price value of the resources throughout the game. Um, there's an, also another cool thing with that and the fact that whenever you're playing on the board too, you have to pay to get onto the board because certain regions cost different and then the resource that you're putting on there or the thing that you're building on there also costs you a certain amount and so you're going to need the money to get there and then once you get there, well, you have that claim. You can build anywhere around it. You can kind of build off your own uh, region. And that's what it kind of scores on. It scores on these different pocket regions that you're building on. And uh, for the end game purposes, that's a big point uh, value right there. How far you can spread out, but also how you can break away and create these little pockets here and there on the board. Because uh, that's, that's really going to increase your score at the end of the game. Another interesting thing too about the game is the fact that players can also build themselves around you and when they do that, they also are given the opportunity to buy resources of the type of their opponents. So it kind of creates an incentive for players to kind of come, like, come together at certain points. It creates a system where they're not kind of doing their own thing. They have to meet in, at certain points and kind of buy off of each other too, which creates a change in the market system too. So it's a really interactive uh, game itself with the players. A cool thing too with the game that also creates a lot of points is the orders. Now this is what I focused on in the game. I try to complete an order every single round, either at least one or two. And that scored me a lot of points in the end. And it also changed up the value of the resources too that are a little bit more rare like uh, tobacco and cotton and such. These other rare resources at the end of the game are, is when they score. However, however much is out there, that value is the cheapest. So you won't get that many points if you have a lot of that type. So just the way that the economics works in that aspect is just really interesting and it's really kind of kind of plays with my head trying to figure out you know do I have a lot of this maybe I shouldn't invest in that anymore maybe I should invest in something else how am I going to accomplish that order and just like playing around with these little puzzles was fun um yeah so I have nothing but good things to say about Clowns of Caledonia I love the interaction a lot of people might say it's dry, but man, I love these dry games <laughs> so much. And I think there's just so much interaction that it makes up for it anyways. So that is my Clans of Caledonia. Pretty much first impressions and great, uh, just great overall. You should definitely try it if you have the chance. Well, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you really enjoyed it. And also I hope it kind of interested you into some of these games as well. Uh, another thing too is that you can always follow and subscribe on these other social media which is going to be down below in the description and also at the end of the video along with just donating any coffee that you like. It's just a small like tip jar that I'll have a link down below and at the end of the video. Also remember to subscribe and like and if you want please leave a comment and just let me know what you got this past month that you really like or maybe didn't even like. Just leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to respond. Well, thank you so much, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.